turning to page 351 in the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Turning to page 350. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And And also also with you. Let us pray. Turning to page five in your bulletin, let us pray. Almighty Almighty God, God, you you know know that that we have have no power power in ourselves ourselves to help help ourselves. ourselves. Keep Keep us us both outwardly outwardly in our our bodies and and inwardly in our our souls. souls that That we we may may be defended defended from from all adversities which may happen to the body and from from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul through Jesus Christ Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading for today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation 
of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The psalm for today is Psalm 19. We will read it responsively by whole verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into the all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. Forth from the outermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing, Nothing is hidden from, from its burning heat. heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statute wisdom of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he cleanse me from my secret faults? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and evermore. Amen. Our second reading for today is from 1 Corinthians, beginning at chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, 
but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord God. God. And if you join me in prayer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, dear Lord, our rock and our redeemer. We've all heard the term pet peeves. And I think pet peeves, we all have had them now and then. These are the things that just set us off. Now some of my pet peeves are spending two to seven minutes on the telephone listening to an automated voice telling me how important my call is to them before you finally reach a human being. 
or when you call a physician's office and they tell you they will get back to you within the next 40 hour, 48 hours, uh, but remember they don't work on Wednesday. Do you have any pet peeves? Aren't these some of them? Pet peeves drive us nuts. They irritate us. They push our buttons. Today, we look at an event in the life of Jesus that pushed all his buttons. An event that didn't just irritate him, but made him irate. After the wedding in Cana, Jesus went down to Capernaum with his mother, brothers, and his disciples. And then they stayed there for a few days, after which Jesus and the disciples moved on. Because it was almost Passover, and there was a spirit of expectancy in the land. The Jewish tradition required an entire month to prepare for Passover. Jerusalem was expecting as many as two and a quarter million people crowded into its confines for Passover. As Jesus and his disciples entered the gates of the city, there was significant congestion the closer they got to the temple. There were sellers of trade kits and souvenirs on all sides of them. Then we learn in verse 14, in the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others setting up tables to exchange money. The Lord was outraged at what he saw. Money changers were charging as much as two hours of a working man's wage to change a half a shekel, which is about 30 cents in U.S. money. They charged the same amount again for every half shekel. So if a man came in with a two shekel piece, he would have to had paid an entire day's wage just to change the money. There were merchants also selling sacrificial oxen, sheep, and doves that had to meet the expectations of the health department for the animals. It had, they had established standards, according to the Bible, to be considered eligible for sacrifice. Rabbinical literature tells us that the sacrificial animal inspectors could identify an animal that would one day be, become unclean, even if it was clean at the time of inspection. The inspectors had a good thing going. If they did not approve an animal, it would not be acceptable as an offering. Extortion was common in the temple confines. And to make things worse, Annas, the high priest, was behind the whole thing. Now, when our Lord arrived in the temple, he found a religious circus, basically. The great court of Gentiles was filled with sheep, oxen, fowl, and everything that goes with them. There was huckstering, bartering, and haggling over the weight of a coin. The commotion that must have been within the temple is almost beyond our imagination. It was certainly unacceptable to the Lord. He began to clean the temple. Tables were tipped over and coins clattered to the floor. He drove the money changers, the merchants, the herds and flocks, and the inspectors out of the temple. Jesus cried out, get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? The lamb was a lion. Jesus was as godlike here as he was when he hung on the cross. He was revealing as much of God on this occasion as he did at Calvary. He was displaying a greater underlying truth. Love presupposes hatred. In fact, you can tell as much about a person by his hatreds as by his loves. So 
So what has been revealed through Christ's anger is very important. What are the hates and loves of God? In particular, what is the root of Christ's hatred and anger in this passage? And how shall it affect our lives? Christ's anger was rooted in his reaction against the religious irrelevance of the Jews towards God the Father. But we must first realize the significance of the setting of this passage. We must go to the first book of Kings, chapter 8, verses 10 and through 11, which describes the great temple of Solomon when the Ark of the Covenant was brought in. It tells us a thick cloud so filled the temple that the priest could no longer minister there. That was the glory of God. To glorify God was the very purpose of the temple. The sin of the money changers and the religious authorities lay in the fact that while they loudly proclaimed the holiness of God, they denied it in practice. Our Lord opposes anything that detracts from the communication of God's glory, especially in worship. There is scarcely anything more relevant than this truth to the church today. Even professing Christians sometimes reduce God to much less than what he is. Many have made a valid attempt to present the humanity of Christ so men and women can see him as a God who relates to them. But this attitude has sometimes been carried to the extreme and has effectively and functionally emptied Jesus of his deity. When the loss of the knowledge of who Jesus is settles in, an irreverent spirit begins to take root in our lives. And such an attitude restricts our ability to fully participate in worship. A. W. Towser, in the preface of his book, The Knowledge of the Holy, that he published in 1961, explains why he wrote that book. With our loss of the sense of majesty has come the further loss of religious awe and consciousness of the divine presence. We have lost our spirit of worship and our ability to withdraw inwardly to meet God in adoring silence. Modern Christianity is simply not producing the kind of Christians who can appreciate or experience the life in the spirit. The words, be still and know that I am God, mean next to nothing to the self-confident, bustling worshipers in the middle period of the 20th century. Our hearts can become like that court of the Gentiles in the temple of Jerusalem if we are not vigilant. Even while we sit in church, the bazaars of our towns can be spinning through our heads. We may be thinking about the roast that we put in the oven before we left home for church. Or we might be thinking about the athletic events that await us, or the shopping trips, or the bridge parties. Solomon said it all in Proverbs 5, 14. I have come to the brink of utter ruin in the midst of a holy assembly. Simply. It is possible to be almost in utter ruin even while we are part of a Bible-based church. When we become sufficiently desensitized to the greatness and holiness of God because of an irreverent spirit and the idolatrous concept of God affecting our lives, our manners of service is also affected. The authenticity of our reverence is important 
because it indicates what we think of God. It affects what happens in our worship, and ultimately it affects what we do in our service for God. No matter, our Lord was indignantly passionate. But the ultimate source of our Lord's anger was love, the love of God. Jesus was consumed with zeal for God's glory and his house. The full meaning of this can be seen in the second half of Psalm 69.9. And the insults of those who insult you fall to me. David and our Savior identified so closely with God that when someone defamed the Lord, they too were defamed. It is a pity that we have been so tamed by our culture. Today, we believe a fallacy, namely that thoughtful and intelligent people are supposed to discuss the most outrageous matters without emotion. I'm reminded of a pa passage I have read. The crowning wick wickedness of this age is that they have starved and chilled our facility of indignation. Oh, to be like Christ and to become angry at the things that anger our Savior. We should be passionate people for our God. And what other significance does this passage have for our lives? Well, for one thing, corporate worship is critically important. The way we worship reveals what we think about God. In Jesus' day, a Gentile could come to the court of Gentiles, the outer city, the outer circle, to pray and consider the true God of Israel. If a Gentile had entered and saw what Jesus saw, what would he have been thinking and understanding about God? Irreverence towards God is only a symptom of an idolatrous image of God that is man-made. But now on the other hand, reverence for God indicates our belief that he is great Awesome and powerful. Joyful worship makes known the living God. How wonderful it is to worship with God's people, hearing the call of worship, waiting reverently upon God, having our hearts lifted to him by singing glorious hymns, not just with our lips, but with our hearts, joining in corporate prayer, having the word of life taught. I cannot overemphasize the importance of our worship. We live in a narcissistic, individualistic society. Historically, we have insisted on doing things ourselves, going our own way, and questioning everything. The body of Christ is not to function that way. We need each other. If you are a new believer, Know that you need older Christians. You need to be taught by them and to worship with them. Let us be people so zealous, so overflowing, so burning, and so full of him that nothing else can intrude. Paul tells us, For we are the, the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them, and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. What a glorious thought. Let us keep that thought deep within our hearts as we go about our daily lives. Let us be like David and Jesus, and be consumed with zeal for God's glory and his house. Let us find our righteous passion to speak up about the things Jesus would have addressed. Let us stop our quiet distress over what is happening to the temple of the Lord. Let us help others 
become zealous for God also, for God's glory and for his house. Amen. Please join me in the Nicene Creed, which can be found on page 358 of your prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from, from light, light, true God from true God, from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People is Form 3 this week, can be found in your Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your Holy Catholic Church. That we, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your, that your name, name may be glorified, glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. We pray for all on our parish prayer list, especially our shut-ins for the Anglican Communion, the Episcopal Church, and the Diocese of Ohio, for all who do not yet know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and for this parish family, that God would pour out his abundance on us and that would, re would remain faithful to him and true to his word. For the outpouring of God the Holy Spirit here, for the healing of Rick, Darlene, Sally, Joanne, Norm, Marianne, Debbie S., and Phil, and for the healing of all those with COVID. <coughs> we pray thanksgivings for the complete and perfect love of our Father God, for the self-giving, ever-present love of Jesus our Savior, for the empowering love of God, the Holy Spirit, for the word of God, ever true, 
and never changing. For this parish family and God's love for us, in us, among us, and through us. For all who pray and serve and give to enable this parish family in its life and ministry. For all our small group ministries that help so many to grow in the knowledge and love of the Lord. For all of God's many mercies and blessings, known and unknown. For Darlene's recovery from COVID and for the vaccines that will temper this pandemic. You may add your own petitions. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace. Peace, Paul. <laughs> hmm. The first announcement. Jesus Christ is Lord indeed. Amen. That's beautiful. A uh, ladies group will resume on March 9th. And they are doing the book, Lazarus Awakening, Finding Your Place in the Heart of God by Joanne Weaver. I believe she's had, she's purchased enough books to help folks if you haven't gotten your own already. Um, Bible study this week will be at 7 p.m. in the Guild Room. Um, we will be videoing and streaming. We streamed last week, um, and afterwards, I, with a little advice from my friends, we edited it, or I edited it the next morning, um, you know, to uh, get, we were testing, and we didn't know the, it was recording while we were talking and testing, so uh, we we deleted that part. So this week, we're going to be much more aware of how to do this. And it will be uh, Bonnie Macy, who will be uh, leading us through the passion and resurrection of Jesus, um, according to Matthew. I think it ought to be grand. Uh, so if, um, if you wish, there are multiple ways of participating. OK. Uh, the annual meeting, I think most of the reports have come in. I think she's missing one. Sorry. Uh, now, uh, birthdays. Well, today is the seventh, and this week, Evelyn Schreier and Colby Smith will be having a birthday. So let's keep them in our prayers. And uh, uh, there's you know, Lynn and Pat Greninger. Uh, celebrated their anniversary yesterday. Um, and um, I just want to say, I remember, I believe that was the first anniversary that we celebrated here in church. And I asked how many years, and they said 57. And that was in 19. Uh, I thought that was so awesome. You know, that, you know, 57 years. And we have a lot of people that have been married for a very long time. And to me, it's just so wonderful to see this in our church. So let me get the prayer for the birthdays so that we may pray for them to have a beautiful new year and hopefully soon to be free of COVID. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace 
and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Are there any announcements that I did not make? Mm -hmm. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Thank you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth that human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turn against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you spent, sent your only son born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> by him and made a new people by water and the spirit now bring before you these gifts sanctify them by your holy spirit to be the body and the blood of jesus christ our lord 
on the night he was, he was betrayed. He took bread, said the blessing, and broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God, uh, Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. as I receive the sacraments for the community. Body of Christ. In union, O oh Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ, I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, 
and let let me me never never be separated separated from from you. May I I live live in you and you you in me, in in this life and in the life to come. Amen. of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates, behold the King of glory reigns. The King of kings is coming near, the Savior of the world is here. Thank you. 
grant, we beseech you, almighty God, that the words which we have heard this day with our outward ears may, through your grace, be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that they may bring forth in us the fruit of good living. To the honor and praise of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.